The Reality Podcast. Real conversations about life, love, and business. With me, Jason Ree. This is The Reality. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Reality Podcast. We have Justina Sharp here today with us. She's an influencer in the lifestyle and bridal space. Did hey, I say that right? you did. I'm always so in- nervous about the introduction. Uh, me too. I forget who I am all the time, so. <laughs> who fine. are you? Who are you, Justina? That's too deep. We can't get too into deep. that here. We could do like a seven-part, 12, yeah, series. like a Harry Potter length, <laughs> you know, we could do a whole series. Yeah, we'll just do an investigative podcast just into my, like, identity. Your, your backstory. So, we met in Guatemala. Yes. Which was such an amazing trick. Thank you, The Knot. Shout out to the knot. Shout out to the knot. You were one of the influencer couples on the trip that yes. were engaged and getting married a month later. Yeah. Literally and a month later. A literally a month later. So you were just getting all this information and then. <laughs> I was just like, cool, all these things I did not think of and it's too late to change. That's totally fine. <laughs> I am not anxious about this at all. Yeah. But the great thing was you also are in the bridal space, right? So tell me a little bit about that. Like how how you even came to getting, I guess, into what you do now. Yeah, so I started making content. I started my fashion blog, A Bent Piece of Wire, when I was 13. So 13? It's been a long time. 13. I was heavily influenced by America's Next Top Model. Okay. I wanted to be Tyra Banks. Okay. And, but I was from Sacramento. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so, like, what was I going to do? Um, what I was going to do is put myself on the internet. I was going to become chronically online. Yeah. And I started my fashion blog. And I just kind of persevered. Like, I was like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this blog. And yeah. everything I knew came from, like, old issues of Harper's Bazaar that yes. I bought at the library for 25 like cents. Like, when fashion was fashion. Yeah, when fashion was fashion, Tavi Gevinson and Shiara Farani were running okay. the world. No like, idea who that know. is. Because I I mean, my shirt is, like, I don't know, from a thrift bin or something. Okay, I have no idea. No, it's okay. That's trendy. <laughs> um, the fashion girlies will know. I'm from, like, the old guard of, like, fashion bloggers ran everything. Yeah. And then I was, like, a teen fashion blogger, and that's what at I did. At 13. Yeah, at 13. And I did that um, until I was, like, 16. When I was 16, I started – I was, like, I'm going to be a writer. And I started writing for, like, the Huffington Post, MTV. What? Yeah. Listen, man, you could get anywhere back in the day on Twitter. I could I could get anywhere. And that's what I did. And so, Wait, okay, so I don't I don't know if you feel comfortable like sharing your age, but how yeah, old are you now? I'm turning 25 next month. Okay, so this is like this is really before Instagram was Instagram. Oh yeah, Instagram didn't exist yet when I yeah. when I started. Yeah, yeah, cuz that's when I started weddings. I started weddings about 15 years ago. Yeah. And so there wasn't a lot of educational information. It was like no. it was like you had a binder and that was it. Yeah, and like for me, everything I knew came from reading blogs, like yeah. actual blogs. With, wow. like, photos people took on, like, cool pics cameras. Yeah. Was, was your first job then blogging? Yeah. So I blogged, and then I never made any money off that blog. I yeah. did not make a dollar off that blog. And that's a bent piece um, of wire. A bent piece of wire. It's still on the internet. You yeah. You go read all my— I did. Like, I did. I did see it. There you go. Yeah. All my, like, <laughs> angsty 13-year-old posts. And with, like, photos I, like, ripped off of Vogue.com. Sorry, guys. Don't sue me now. I like, know. I mean, yeah. is, was blogging even—I don't even know if there was, like— it was issues of that back no, like then. It had it, just and, yeah. become a thing. Was yours like a, was it like a live journal? Like what was Blogger. your- Blogger. Blogger. I had a Zanga. I don't oh, know if anyone, snazzy. do you remember Zanga? Yes, Zanga. Well, and mine was like, I didn't know what I was doing. Like I was literally just shouting into this void. Yeah. And then somehow like stumbled into doing um, like fashion styling projects with big brands. Um, my first like ever photo shoot. I'd never been to LA. I'd never done a photo shoot yeah. ever. Disney Channel. That's what? insane, right? That's crazy. The little yeah. Disney emblem yeah. with the wand thing. Wait, Hi. okay, wait. So where are you from? Where are you from? I'm from Sacramento. Sacramento, okay. I'm from Sacramento. And so you basically just had this dream, decided yeah. to just post into the void at 13, which is also... Fake it till I make it. Fake it till you make it, yes. which is also part of the secret of, of a successful business. <laughs> yes, pretty much. Yeah, and then your first brand deal really was with Disney Channel. Yeah, so what happened was I had like had this blog yeah and I had gotten on Twitter which I shouldn't have been on at that age no one should be on Twitter at that age and there were like no one should be on Twitter period um there were AOL editors, was also like and it was and it was so different like I try to explain to people now I'm like the internet yeah. was so different even like 10 years ago yeah I was on Twitter like tweeting at like editors from Teen Vogue being like I want your job 
Okay. And they were like, oh, that's fun. Because they thought it was fun. They're like, so cute. That's, so ador- that's adorable. And I was like, no, I'm serious. You're like, I'm gunning I'm for it. I'm serious. I'm and coming for you. they, like this one editor in particular, he like interviewed me. I completely forgot about it. Like it was like through Twitter DMs that I was texting from my flip phone, like texting the tweets in. He interviewed me. It was a half page spread in Teen Vogue that came out with like a photo of me that had been taken by Petra Collins, the the famed rookie photographer. She'd like taken a photo of me at like a rookie event I went to in San Francisco trying to be cool. What? Yeah, it, like the way these things fell together is insane. Like, if but I you literally you, that's like the tenacity of just you believing in yourself. Yeah. Because at the time too, there was no like guidebook of following another no, influencer to influencers understand it. Didn't exist. Yeah, there was yeah, no yeah, yeah. Model for like how to do this. So it was just me like constantly like taking the next step and hoping I didn't fall off a cliff and which is just kind of what you have to do. Yeah. And the people at Disney were promoting Teen Beach Movie, which I just I was a high school musical kid. Like yeah, that yeah. was my yeah, franchise. Yeah, theater kid, theater kid. Yeah, so I was yeah. a high school musical and then when high school musical like came out, I loved that movie and then they were promoting Teen Beach Movie and they were like we need a teen fashion blogger to come like talk about the movie and like help with some like do like a photo shoot yeah so they flew me to los angeles me and my mom i'd never been here before and i remember they put me in a private car like you know like nice hotel let disney money and i was like this is what i want to do for the rest of my life like this i want this experience i want to do this for the rest of my life yeah i was 15 at that point um i have no control over my life i'm 15 yeah yeah, yeah. on uh so i went home and i just kind of kept trying to push it further and further like i was like okay these are brands I want to work with. And I would just like cold email brands. Like I would just email them and be like, hey, I have this blog. Yeah. Can I? Well, I do have to say that I think like there is this misconception because I have a lot of influencer clients and I also mm-hmm. have a lot of influencer friends. Mm-hmm. And what's really interesting is how much work it actually takes for you so to be able to work. do this career. So much work. Because it's not just the writing and the networking and all the different things, but then you have to be a photographer and you have to constantly lay out your grid. And then, I mean, I have friends that like literally within an event, they are like in the back, like doing all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, you're working live 24 seven. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's, Everything that I knew at that point, I had to learn myself, like, through trial and error. Wow. So I was, like, cold emailing brands, and I had just gotten on Instagram. Like, I remember I was, like, 15. With, like, the two filters. Yeah. With, oh, my God, the orange filters. Yeah. Like the vignette yeah. thing. Yeah. I had just gotten on, and I was, like, I don't know what this app is for. We didn't have influencers. Like, I tell people that now, and I'm, like, I know it sounds crazy, but, like, they didn't exist. Yeah. You had celebrities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. celebrities had, like— 20,000 followers. One, and th- and th- during that time, there was a culture of not being as transparent as I think influencers have become now, yes, right? Yes, and, and there was no, they just didn't exist. Yeah. Um, And also, I was like a 15-year-old kid. Like, my first ever liked post is a photo of Zendaya. Like, you can go back and look. Okay, photo Zendaya of Zendaya. Zendaya's like, oh, an angel. she's a queen. She's an angel. She is a queen. Um, One of my most treasured belongings is I have like three selfies with Zendaya that I took during that time period of my life. Because I got to go to the teen, like, um, like the teen awards that they did for, like, Nickelodeon. Where people get the slimed. Teen Choice. Yes, yes. Teen Choice Awards. I got to go cover the red carpet for the Huffington Post, like, Okay, times. this is also funny, because, like, I was there, but yeah. I was actually doing the audi- audience. I was, like, checking in the audience, and I used to so do we talent escorting. Time. We were there at the same time. But I was time. like, yeah, I would walk the talent to where, so I'd basically yeah. walk you to where you need to be, and yeah. walk you back. so, uh, my dad and I were there on the red carpet. Um, That's so being, cool. Like, is that footage out there? It's, like, out there in the world, and there's, like selfies of me and Zendaya because she wasn't like Zendaya. Yeah. She was just Zendaya Coleman who was like yeah. on Disney Channel. And I have these selfies with her and they're like, they are treasured possessions of mine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was just like, just online constantly trying to do the next thing and I'd gotten on Instagram and I like didn't really know what it was for and like I just kind of messed around with it and someone reached out to me and was like, hey, at Instagram we're trying to like curate a list for the explore page of like young people who are like young artists and we really like your writing because I was still consistently writing at that time um, and we'd like to include you on the list that didn't mean anything the explore yeah. page like all of none of this meant anything yeah. at the time but were you do you remember being excited in that moment yeah. like were you like oh my god it's such a big deal oh, I was in that so moment? excited to be recognized as like yeah because you've been I'm doing, doing cool. it also at such yeah. a young age and I've been doing it for what seemed like such a long time already yeah. at that point because it'd been like four years five years and they put me on that list and that changed my entire life really overnight because I went from a thousand followers to 25,000 followers overnight. Wow. And it was kind of this thing of like, oh, I need to take this seriously now. But like, 
no context of what that meant. Yeah. So I just kind of did what I thought. I was like, okay, outfits, okay? My life. And also my life at the time, I lived in Sacramento with my parents. Yeah. I just graduated high school. I was sort of like navigating what it looked like to be out of high school. Yeah, you're like, like, oh, I have an essay due. Yeah, Uh. uh, homework. (laughs) Um, And just kind of like documenting it. And it just started to slowly grow to the point where like my followers have now been with me through like graduating high school. I went to college, graduated college. To like, milestone moments. Yeah. Getting like, married. Like, getting married. That's insane. And, that's yeah. like, You probably have followers that have also seen your relationship journey. Yes. I have followers who have been following me since I was 13. There's probably a bunch of men out there too. Yeah. A bunch of boys that are now men that were like waiting. They were like sad. <laughs> you were yeah. somebody's entire. <laughs> just, just. So, so somebody has selfies of you. Somebody is sad. Somebody is sad about it. <laughs> um, Probably a lot of somebody's. No, um, <laughs> Sorry, and so not what sorry. happened was I like, and I just really have, this is what I do is yeah. I document my life and um, my content has changed many times over the years. I used to be exclusively like fashion. I did fashion, fashion, fashion. And then it kind of became more lifestyle, like my clothing, my outfits, which is just different. And we moved to Los Angeles. It changed things. And we got engaged in July of 2020. Beautiful engagement. What a, um, what an interesting time. Just what a time. Yeah. What a time. Well, we were supposed to get engaged apparently allegedly, in March of 2020. Oh, wow. Which would have been so much worse. He totally got, um, I guess, cock-blocked by, yeah, by, by the world. Yeah, by COVID. Yeah. Um, and then, so he decided he was going to do it July. It's just the hottest time of year in Sacramento. Shout out to anyone who decides to do that. Don't. It's so hot. Uh, mine was perfect and beautiful, but for everyone else, <laughs> it is 110 degrees. Don't yeah. do that. And we got engaged and then very quickly realized that even though I'd, like, grown up on a steady diet of, like, say yes to the dress. And, yeah. You know, like, all the wedding things that kind of make up our cultural understanding of yeah, what weddings TLC, are supposed to be. Yeah, TLC. Like, yeah. They own that. Yeah. I had no idea what planning a wedding was really going to entail in any way, emotionally, yeah. financially. Like, I just had no idea. Yeah. And we were kind of shooting in the dark. But the thing that came immediately was people's opinions. Oh. People telling me, oh, you guys have to do this. Yeah. Or we did this. We did this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think this. I think that. Um, I had already been pretty open, like, prior to us getting engaged about, like, people. I was like, these are people that I don't really think I'm going to, like, invite to the wedding if we get married. Like, I had opinions already that I had kind of vocalized. And it was like all of a sudden we got engaged and people started popping up out of the woodwork trying to tell me how they feel about things that I did not ask them about. Yeah. And so I was kind of just ruminating on that idea. Like, I didn't really know how to express it, especially because I felt like you're supposed to be so excited that you're engaged. Yeah. You're supposed to be so excited you're engaged. Yeah. So excited that you get to plan this wedding. Yeah. It's such a privilege to be in this time. Um, you're supposed to be blissfully happy and in love and everything is perfect. Yeah. And then the minute that something feels not perfect, it's your fault. Yeah. You did something wrong. That's it's, what you felt. Yeah. It's not the immense pressure of this super stressful situation. Yeah. 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 Um, it's something that's wrong with you. And I really felt like for the first like month after we got engaged, I was like, why don't I feel the way that people on TV look or the way that like people talk, yeah. would talk about being engaged? Yeah. I was like, I don't feel that. I love Jordan. Yeah. My, like my husband, I love Jordan. We'd been together already at that point for five and a half years. Yeah. I was like, I love He's such a sweetheart. He's such a sweet. He's so nice. Such a sweetheart. Just gentle and kind and perfect. And I was like, I love him. I'm so excited to be married to him. He got me my dream ring. Like Uh, the engagement was perfect. Yeah. And so it wasn't any, like I really had to sit and be like, there's no disappointment in my relationship. There's no disappointment in him or anything around it. Why am I feeling like I'm doing something wrong? Like I feel guilty. Yeah. And I realized I was like, oh, it's because I don't feel the way other people are looking. I'm a professional influencer. I should know better than that. Yeah. I'm like, so there's, so this is just everyone else saying, yeah, I'm doing great. I'm having Yay. a great time. Crying, like, like just yeah. two silent yeah. tears. Yeah, yeah. And so I kind of started thinking about that. And at the time I, I was on TikTok, I was really only doing like fashion content. And then there was a day where it all came to a head. I got on the phone to talk about bridesmaid dresses um, with a friend, 
And then she was like, oh, like, what are you doing for bridesmaid dresses? I said, I don't really know. I had already asked my bridesmaid, so I knew who I was putting in these dresses, but I didn't really have, like, a vision. So I got on the internet, and I was like, I'm just going to look at bridesmaid dresses. I got super overwhelmed yeah. very quickly. I mean, the internet is a daunting, so many daunting things. place so many when options. you're looking for stuff. What yep. kind of straps do you want? What color do you yeah. want? Do you want every bridesmaid wearing a different dress? Because that's trendy. Yeah. Do you want every dr- bridesmaid wearing the same dress? Because that's classic. Yeah. Like, you're tr- like, you got, and no matter what you pick, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, and then putting the pressure on also your bridesmaids to pay for the dresses, or are you hosting oh, the dresses? So are you- many options. Yeah. Every time you turn around, there's like 10 more decisions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got on this website and I was looking at these bridesmaid dresses and I just didn't understand like the customization options. And so I called the particular establishment and I said, Hey, like I've got six bridesmaids. This is kind of what we're envisioning right now for the wedding vibe. We don't really have a venue picked out yet. I just, I'm trying to gather some options. And on the phone call, she insinuated that I would not want to put my bridesmaids in the dress that I had chosen because they would look better than me. Woman who doesn't know me, yeah. doesn't know, and, and not even just doesn't know me, yeah, but I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, I don't see why my friends looking good would be an issue. Like, I was genuinely yeah, yeah, lost. Yeah. I was like, I don't understand what you're trying to tell me. Yeah, but there's a culture, and some of that comes from also reality, because yes. there are people out there that do not don't want, want people to steal them. focus from their day. Yeah, and so I was genuinely confused on this phone call, and this yeah. was like, well, because you don't want to do that. Like, you don't want to have, like, because I think we'd ask, I'd ask about, like, leg slits, mm. and I was like, yeah, because I, like, want a slit in this dress. Like, I had a whole vision. Yeah, you want a Jolie slit? And like I, I, I was like, I was like, put those legs out. Um, Get those boobies out. Like, <laughs> we want to see them. And she was just like, yeah, like, you don't want your friends to, like, look better than you. And I was like... Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, my friends need to look hot. It's my <laughs> wedding. Like, I'm not going to look at, like, I don't want them to look ugly in my photos that I'm looking yeah. at for the rest of my life. I need all the fire emojis. That's like, ridiculous. Uh, and I got on TikTok and just, like, just off my ass, right? Just, like, talking. Oh, just, just And I'm just talking. Out. I'm just, like, I'm, like, that's so crazy. Like, why would I want my friends to not look good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In my wedding. That looks yeah. bad on me. Like, that's yeah, embarrassing yeah, yeah, yeah. for me. And the TikTok blew up. It did incredible. I think it did like a million views within like a couple days. And were you already doing, you were already doing TikToks? I had had already done TikToks. I hadn't done any bridal content. Got it. I hadn't done any bridal content. And then you got into the bridal content space. Yeah. And with that TikTok. And I was very aware of the fact from the beginning that I did not want our wedding to be purely content fodder. I didn't want what I thought should be not necessarily a super private process, but I wasn't trying to sacrifice the experience of us planning yeah, what should be our it. one and only wedding mm-hmm. and get so wrapped up in making it content or making content out of it that I wasn't there present in the moment. Yeah. Because especially being that like, yes, I'm an influencer, but like my husband is not. Yeah. And this is his wedding too. Yeah. And like my friends are not influencers. My friends are not asking to have have all their information and business blasted out. Yeah. Um, So I was trying to be really aware of that. And I was kind of like recognized in the comments of that one, that first TikTok that blew up, that there was a need for honest conversation about the like feelings that come with planning a wedding. Yeah. And not just, oh, here's like, there's so many great creators who do beautiful wedding dress. TikToks, Mm -hmm. beautiful styling TikToks, beautiful, like, oh, here's how you do table settings. Yeah. Here's what I'm doing. Like people who do, this is my wedding process and I'm live documenting it. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I am just going to talk about the fact that when you get engaged, immediately people feel entitled to you. They feel entitled to your wedding. They feel entitled to your decision making process. Mm -hmm. Um, And they will push your boundaries. And sometimes you have to push back. Yeah. And so I started making these videos that were my Brides with Boundaries series that were inspired by, at first, things, exclusively things that were happening to me. Um, And the kind of the format of the videos that I like fell onto was how to respond when people give you unwanted wedding opinions. And so I would do the opinion and I'd like deliver it in whatever way. And then I started writing these responses that progressively get snarkier and snarkier. Yeah. So usually like every video, there's like four responses. And the first one is like a nice real one. Like it's just like genuinely... Putting someone in their place, but understanding that most of the time they're coming from a place of loving you. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but I also didn't ask. Yeah, it's kind of like the therapy thing where it's like, it's not about you. Yeah, you know? it's not about you, but yeah. like, you but need to back up. there's a lot of up. opinions, totally. And then it would get to the end where you have these people who just don't take no for an answer, or they won't hear you. Yeah. And sometimes you just need to push back at those people and be like, this is my wedding, not yours. Yeah. And so I had made these videos and the response was incredible because I think as a creator, the thing that I'm always trying to do is create that like 
human connection moment and like build that community. Mm -hmm. And I was making the content that I really needed to see. Like it was the things that I needed to hear. Like it's okay for you to say, no, that person's not invited to our wedding because I don't know them or they are, you know, they, we've had issues in the past or I just don't like them, period. Yeah. I don't want them at my wedding and that's okay because so much bridal content um, is aimed towards brides compromising mm. and compromising and saying, you know, yeah, it's fine if my mother-in-law wears a white dress to my wedding. Yeah, it's fine if we invite that cousin who's caused a fight at every birthday party from zero to 18 yeah. Yeah, yeah. to my wedding because we're cousins. Yeah, It's okay that like this vendor hasn't followed up with me in six weeks and is now just sending me an invoice and expecting me to pay it, but I don't know what I'm paying for. Yeah, There's so much of that content that's like, your wedding is for your guests. That's like fundamentally something I like don't agree with. I'm like, no, yeah. your wedding is for you to celebrate your love yeah. with people you love. Well, and I think that's a really interesting point because on the professional side, because I've, I've not been married yet, but I've been mm -hmm. in it for 15 years. I find that when I talk with my couples, it's always about the same. And whenever there was like a meltdown moment, mm -hmm. it typically was because there was a conversation with somebody else mm -hmm. who said, well, when I did it for my wedding, X, Y, Z, and I'm like, well, that's their wedding. And yeah. this is your wedding. And all of the factors have changed now. You're doing it in a different location. You have a different amount of time. You have a different budget. Yes. And I think that's something that, you know, if you work with the right partners, I think, especially with the wedding space, because I know, and I don't know if you felt this, but there's this misconception that we in the wedding space are here to make you spend all of your money. Yes. And that like the moment you say wedding, we're going to gouge it. Mm -hmm. I think for the people that are doing the business in the ethical way, yeah. what, we, what we understand is that it's time consuming yeah. because there's so many different reasons and so factors much. to to change your decisions and to make kind of your process. So I think it's so interesting hearing your perspective because you're right. We, we also are both kind of from the same culture where we didn't learn about like the, 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 the things behind the curtain. Yeah. You know, everything was presented in a beautiful package. Like yeah. even for me as a business owner and a professional, you know, I'm very, that's why I kind of started this podcast because honestly I wanted to have real conversations mm -hmm. about real things instead of being like, I'm an amazing planner, hire me. And I promise you it'll be like a year of no stress. It's stressful. Yeah. It's stressful because anything where you're investing that much money and dealing with that many factors of personal opinions oh, and it's, it's a lot, but also it's a transition for you and your relationship. It's about to become this unity that, you know, you haven't experienced before. And a lot of times brides haven't done it before. Grooms haven't done it before. Yeah. You know, so I think it's so fascinating how you got there. Do you feel like now after the fact, because you got married, got married, do you feel like that it, that advice that you were giving, does any of your perspective change? Yeah, because I know I was right. <laughs> I know that I was right she about said it. every she said single what she thing said. I said. She said what she every said. Every th single thing I said, I know that I was right now because I made a lot of the videos. They were me setting my boundaries in real time and then finding sort of like a humorous way to share that yeah. with, these, with my audience. And there was a, the, the biggest backlash I got other than people just being like, you sound like you suck. I'm like, maybe to you, I do. Because yeah. you kind of sound like someone who doesn't appreciate boundaries. Yeah. Um, and that's fine. Like, Everyone doesn't have to like me. That's yeah. totally okay. If my yeah. content's not for you, it's not for you. And that's yeah. fine. Um, but the second piece of feedback I got was, oh, well, when you get married, you're going to regret this. That was the piece I got. You're going to regret this. You are going to regret this. You're going to regret this. But regret also this. like just being, <laughs> so, I just don't understand somebody that would want to put that out there. Like what? Oh, like have the, you just, been on the internet? I mean, I know, I know. And maybe it's because <laughs> I'm also not on the level that you're at with the influence. But like, I just never understood that worth. I mean, what do you mean you're going to regret it? Like, how do you know? Like, that's none of your, and it's I in your business. And I think usually what happens is a lot of the feedback that I get when people think I'm going to regret something it's coming from a place of either they had their wedding and their yeah. boundaries were not respected or and, and they have a regret or a discomfort around that. And so then they see my content and rather than being like, oh, I wish I would have seen this or like, yeah, I agree. Like I get people all the time who are like, I wish I'd seen this video because this happened to me and it shouldn't have. Yeah. And I'm like, I feel for you. Thank you for sharing that. Like that's valid and valuable. Um, but instead, some people take it as like, it's like personal for them. Yeah. Like, well, well, I had to suffer my mother-in-law adding 120 yeah. people to my guest list, so you should too. Yeah, that's on you. That's yeah, I was on like, you. that was you and your wedding, and I'm sorry. Like, yeah. that sounds like 
you weren't respected in that moment, and that shouldn't have happened. Well, and maybe that's the culture that's changing too. Is that it's no longer just about the etiquette of something. Yes. Because now it's about you. It's just about what you want to do and how you want to express yourself. And I think that for some people, that's a very difficult concept. Um, and so what had happened was I, I did all these TikToks, and the community really grew, and I started the Facebook group, the Brides with Boundaries, and it's got like almost 10,000 members now. Wow. And I was really adamant that it was going to be different from other bridal groups that I had sort of briefly been part of in that we don't do any bride shaming. We're never coming from a place of like, oh, well, if I were you, I would do this, da, da, da. Like, it is a safe space for brides to talk about the difficult parts of planning a wedding. Yeah. With the understanding that, like, at the end, this is going to be a beautiful, perfect day of you celebrating your love with this person that you have been so lucky to find yeah. and be with. That's the end goal. In the meantime, though, we're going to be honest about the fact that once you've looked at 17,000 napkin designs, they all kind of look the same. Yeah. And when your sister-in-law calls and goes, I don't want to wear the same bridesmaid dress as all the other bridesmaids because yeah. I'm special, you can say, no, either yeah. wear that dress or don't be a bridesmaid. You can be a guest and that's okay. Yeah. And yeah. sort of just having those really honest conversations. And I think also part of it is a little cathartic because – the problems that arise in that group that people share. Yeah. Sometimes you just need backup. Yeah. And that's what the group provides for so many women is like, we are just going to back you up. You're right. You're not crazy. Yeah. Or it's okay that this week you feel stressed out about this and don't want to do it. Yeah. That's kind of one of the most common topics is women being like, we're 50 days out from the wedding and I don't want to plan it anymore. Yeah. I don't even want to have it. I just want to get married yeah. and be done with this. Yeah. And, or, all of a sudden you get engaged and people expect you to be an expert in table setting. Yeah. Or like seating arrangements. Yeah. And, oh, you need to know what kind of uplighting you want. I yeah. don't know what uplighting looks like. I've never thought about it. Yeah. Prior to this man putting this ring on my finger. Yeah. And now I'm supposed to know how to do it. Well, and it's really interesting because, again, not everyone has the luxury to find a planner a year yes. out, right? Yes. So then you also have a whole community of people that aren't being guided in the right direction exactly and that's also something where i'm very transparent too where it's like i realize that to have a planner is a privilege mm -hmm. like if you can afford a planner month out day of partial whatever you want to call it because even in our wedding industry we like forebode the word day of because mm -hmm. it's like this you know terrible thing but when we really look at the process we're like wait a second like not everyone has a luxury to spend an additional amount of budgetary items for a person to guide them through it so it's really interesting that you've kind of created a community where you can like lean on each other for that stuff. Yeah. And yeah. it's about also sort of like equalizing the process in that there are girls in the group who have a half a million dollar budget. Mm -hmm. And there are girls in the group who are like, I'm doing my wedding for a thousand dollars. Yeah. And I'm going to make it happen. Yeah. And the focus of my group is not how much are you spending on this? How much yeah. are you doing How pretty on this? is your wedding? How pretty is your wedding? What does your wedding look like compared to my wedding? That's mm. not what we focus on. The focus is actually on how are you doing? Like, yeah. are you good? Like, if yeah. you're not good, that's okay. Or, like, we've had girls say, um, I went wedding dress shopping, and it was horrible. And yeah. they, like, didn't treat me well. Or my, you know, friends came and made comments that made me uncomfortable. Ugh. And, like, here's the dress that I loved, but, you know, it didn't it didn't go across the way that I wanted it to. The day wasn't the way it looks yeah. in the movies. Do you guys like the dress? Like, what do you guys think? And people are so wonderful. Like, these women come out and go, I will go wedding dress shopping with you. Like, I've had girls, like, plan each other's bachelorette parties. Because That's amazing. Because someone's, you know, maid of honor dropped out last minute or is, like, there's so many little moments yeah. that go into planning a wedding where you just need someone to be, like, do you want to get on the phone and talk? Yeah. Do you need me to, like, come wedding dress shopping with you? Like, you just need a body there who's going to take care of you for a yeah, minute. Yeah, and advocate for you. And advocate for you and have yeah. your back and be like, no, it's her wedding or yeah. it's their wedding. And, like, we don't skew into, like, oh, it's you're the bride, so you're the ultimate yeah. decision maker. We just go, like, no, it's totally valid for you to say that you don't want to get married next to a mosquito-infested lake when yeah. for the same price you could get married in, like, this barn down the road. But you, at that point, are in such a fragile state of planning this wedding that that seventh text message from your future husband's brother yeah. is what's going to send you over the yeah, edge. Yeah, it's going to derail you. It's going to derail you. And then you're sitting there at your wedding being like, I don't like this. This is not what I wanted. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. Because I think that in the early stages of planning my own wedding, I was so overwhelmed by yeah. the decisions I had to make, by how much everything cost. Yeah. Um, and, and my fiancé husband, Jordan was so sweet and understanding, but, like, he's a man yeah. raised in a society that 
does not involve men in wedding planning. Yeah. And so even though he, I actually think, wanted to be more involved than even I did, there was no expectation for him to yeah. be involved. And he knew nothing. Yeah. This man had never seen Say Yes to the Dress. Yeah. He'd never seen And they almost don't get addressed at times yeah. in, in the process, They for do sure. not get mm-hmm. included. They don't get addressed. Yeah. When he showed up with me to appointments, people were shocked. Yeah. And he, like, wanted to be involved. But it's like, this is our wedding. And I was getting to a point where I could already feel myself starting to, like, waver on some things. Like, oh, well, maybe we should do this. Maybe we should do that. Like, it makes the budget easier. It makes other people happy. And he was the one who constantly was like, but what do you want? What is going to make you happy? And once I started making the content, I think that it really helped me to, like, constantly center that question. Yeah. What is going to make you happy? What is your perfect wedding going to look like? All right, we're back. I mean, we were getting into a pretty passionate part of this conversation just about weddings. And it's so interesting because your perspective as somebody who is – you've never worked officially in the wedding industry in terms of being a vendor, but you've always been kind of the – you know, being an advocate for – really for for couples Mm -hmm. and for brides. So, like – Again, like now that you've completed that whole process and looking back on the experience, do you – what is your advice for anyone moving forward? Like – My advice for anyone moving forward is is sit down with yourself and then sit down with your partner and think what is going to make us happy? What is it that we want? What are we trying to achieve here? What is our vision? And move forward making every – other decision through that. Yeah. Because it's all about having effective communication, but you can't have effective communication if you don't know where you're going. Yeah. And I think that it can be so overwhelming at the beginning of the process when you're sort of like staring down the barrel Yeah. and you're like, I don't know how much things cost. I don't know what I'm trying to do. I don't know the difference between like rustic chic and, you know, French chateau themed weddings. Yeah. Like, what does that mean? Yeah. And ask questions. Yeah. Ask questions. Don't be afraid to reach out to vendors and say, I very specifically want an entire bouquet of peonies. Can you do that? Yeah. And can you do that during this time? And can you do that during this time? Can you do that within the budget that I have? And people are going to tell you no. Yeah. And that's okay. And you have to keep moving. And you have to keep moving. That's like another thing too that I always tell my couples is like there's no harm in me asking. Yes. But again, as somebody who's been doing it for a long enough now, now I kind of have like a, a gauge of like, oh, you want to do that and you want to spend $2. Unfortunately, no, that's not possible. Mm-hmm. But I also think what we're, our conversation is not to hire the professionals to do it. It's really to just advocate for yourself and make yes. sure that you are doing what brings you joy. Doing what brings you joy and being okay with the fact that other people aren't going to be okay with it. Yeah. Because there were decisions that I made um, and there are people in my life whose opinions I trust and people I love and they didn't like the decision I made. And I said, that's okay. It's not your wedding. Yeah. And I still love you. Um, There are people who thought that they would be in the bridal party and were guests. I still love you. That's okay. That's a tough one though, right? It is so tough. That's a tough one. And I've made videos about like how to tell people they're not going to be a bridesmaid. Yeah, I saw that one. That's a good one. And it's, it's about like constantly being settled in your own vision and in your own peace so that you can move forward through things and people are going to take it personally. Weddings are very touchy and it's kind of that moment where everything comes up. Yeah. And you have to be able to keep moving forward and go, I love you, even if you can't be part of this right now because of my own decision or because of your decision. Yeah. That's okay. This wedding is a wedding. We're going to have the wedding. And then maybe you and I can reconvene afterwards. <laughs> yeah. And we'll revisit where we're at. Okay. So where where do you get that confidence? Like where does that come from? Do you trial think and error. Trial and error. Do you think it's because you also started at such a young age and just doing what you felt was bringing you passion and joy? Because again, 13 is a very young age to pursue anything, I think. Yeah. I was really lucky also that I, I was definitely raised by two yeah. people who are firm believers in like doing your thing. Shout out to and the parentals. Shout out to my parents, John and Heike doing John the John and Heike, yes. Doing the thing. Um, but both of my parents are very strong advocates of you are going to do what you want to do. Yeah. And other people don't need to understand that. Yeah, yeah. And, and are your parents born and raised in Sacramento? No. So my mom is from Germany and my dad is from Montgomery, Alabama. Oh, yes. interesting. Germany. Yes. So we got, yeah. So my mom is like literally steel backbone. Yeah. And uh, my father is a southern charmer. Oh. Or at least that's what he would say. Love that. I don't know if the rest of us would agree, but... <laughs> But the two of them are <laughs> enough yeah, to have uh, enough to, to, to have enough got to, a German wife. Exactly. <laughs> and um, yeah. And, and both of them are just like it, other people don't have to get it. And that's yeah, OK. Yeah. And I think that that's something that you 
really have to internalize and it's difficult because yeah. it requires you to be honest with yourself too. Yeah. Of like, like my feeling after we got engaged, why am I uncomfortable? Like, why am I feeling guilty? Why am I feeling like this is like, I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. And you know, unfortunately for some couples I've seen in, in my bridal group, some couples it's because of the couple. Like sometimes you oh, got yeah. engaged oh, and yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Same with us on the, on the professional side. We, there are just couples that it just does not work. It and at that point, work. Thank you so much. Here's your deposit. Exactly. Thank you so much. We tried. Yeah. And uh, we're done with that. Yeah. Now. And that's something that we should be okay with too. Yes. Absolutely. You have to be, and you have to be like, it's going to be okay in the end. Yeah. And you have to be able to do that self-evaluation and be honest about it. Yeah. And then you also have to know that you're going to make mistakes. Yeah. It's going to be okay. You might sign with a vendor and be like, I don't love that work. Yeah. I don't love um, your, your ethics. That's a big one that's come up recently where it's like, okay, I have a vendor who's, you know, believes in X, Y, Z thing mm. and I'm not comfortable having them at my wedding anymore. Yeah. Are you willing to lose that deposit? Like for me, I was in a position where it's like, I could have, if a vendor had done something, I was very upfront. Yeah. This is what my wedding is. This is who I am. Yeah. If you're going to be publicly associated with my wedding. Are you yeah. comfortable with that? Yeah. Um, and I, I was really lucky that I didn't have to have to walk away from anyone, but I could have. Yeah. And that's a privilege. Yeah. I completely understand it. But that upfront communication has to happen. Totally. And it's just like really being okay with the fact that you are going to make decisions everyone's not going to like. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. It's your wedding. As long as in the end it's what you want, this is the kind of one day yeah. where you can do that. Yeah. And it's okay. And it's not about, you know, sort of lording it over people. Um, I talk a lot about the term bridezilla. I hate it. Yeah. I don't use it. It's super misogynistic. Yeah. Um, I'm, it's that's like a non-negotiable for me. You don't call someone else that. You don't um, apply it to their situation because you don't know what's going on. You can say someone's being rude. Yeah. Well, you I just say, hashtag Brozilla. Yeah. Because As you I'm should. planning my sister's wedding, As and you I realize that I've become kind of. <laughs> I was it's like, you will not have folding chairs. You're the problem. <laughs> yeah. So then, um, so but I, that works. Yeah. See, that works though. But like the Bridezilla thing, like. People and people get my comments every day and are like, oh, I bet you were called a bridezilla. Okay, I no, was. No, but the truth is also, if you really know weddings, it's not the bride. It's not the it's bride. First of all, in my wedding, the in, in it's my the wedding, it was not me. It was not me. That's all I'm going to say. But people use that term. <laughs> we'll discuss term. it who it was off, and, offline. <laughs> listen. <laughs> and people use that term anytime you do anything that is not what they want you to yeah. do. Oh, I see, Anytime. I see. It's a cop-out. It's a cop-out. And and you can say, like, I, I did a whole TikTok where I was like, don't call women bridezillas. Here's why. And I gave some examples of reasons, like, specific instances that people had called me a bridezilla. But I didn't say it was me. I was just giving, like, I was like, oh, here's yeah, some yeah, examples. Yeah, 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 And people got in my comments and were like, no one would call someone a bridezilla for doing those things. We call women bridezillas for doing. And then, like, a laundry list of things. Were these, like, like, other, like, event professionals? Oh, or these no, are just brides just, and— just people in my comments. Just oh, people shit. in my comments. And I was like, no. These are all things I have gotten called a bridezilla for. Yeah. And— we use that term as like this blanket for like hating women who are going crazy planning this wedding for everyone else. Yeah. And I was like, I don't support that. I don't support you having to make concessions with your wedding to just blanket please other people. Yeah. Other people can have a wedding and other people can pay for it. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, we we talk about that a lot um, because there's so many other words you can use too. Like I – I am not going to say, oh, no woman ever has been horrible during the wedding planning yeah. process. That's ridiculous. But it's almost like the term diva, yeah, right? Because there is no team. There is no term for diva. They, no. You're, and, you're and just when, a diva. Yeah, and when men can, when can men can vocalize whatever they want, mm -hmm. it's professional. It's mm -hmm. powerful. It's whatever you want to say it is, but it's still being a douchebag. Exactly. And then, you know, but it doesn't, there's no like quantifiable word. No, and you can say, oh, I think that you are actually being really aggressive right now about yeah. the situation. I think that you're being rude. I think you're being mean. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, maybe we need to take a breather from the situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many other words you can use. Yeah. And not one that just completely is. It's a thought terminating phrase. Yeah. It's just like, oh, you're being a bridezilla. It's like, no, I want you to stop talking about the way my body looks. Yeah. In these wedding dresses. Because that's none of your business and has nothing to do with you. So it's like things like yeah. that. And and I've just been really lucky that like, yeah, through my process, um, I built the community that I needed and I was in a position to do that. Yeah. I don't think I could have just done that out of the blue. I, yeah. I was already an influencer. Yeah. And I already kind of knew how to make this content and knew how to build it. Um, but I'm so grateful that I was able to build it and that it is there now as yeah. a resource. 
um, because every day the posts that are coming in are just people needing like a hug. Like, yeah, just, a like I just, yeah. I need community. I need a hug. I need to know that I'm not crazy. Yeah. And we can do that for you. We can be like, no, you're not yeah. crazy. Let us look at the veil colors and help you. Because I think until you're in that situation, um, and, and sometimes even then, I, I mean, I have to kick people out of the group every day yeah. because they've really internalized the sort of messaging of like, oh, well, you don't need to be that serious about it. You don't need to take it that seriously. It's not that important. Like like the dim- dismissive mm-hmm. um, rhetoric yeah. that I think can be applied to brides because it's it's a women-centric situation often. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like dismissive and, and people have internalized that and I don't mess around with it. I will yeah. kick you out. I will, I'm very adamant. I'm like, I'll block you. Yeah. And I have no problem. And you can go find somewhere else to act like that. Yeah. It's not going to be here. I'm not going to negotiate with you because, you know, this girl has just posted that she doesn't have any friends who can help her because everyone else is busy and everyone else is in their own lives and she just needs help picking out a pair of shoes. Yeah. And it's not that deep. And yeah. it's okay because this is going to be a really special important day for her. Yeah. And we want to make sure her feet aren't bleeding. Yes. You know, and to wear those shoes that you buy like a few days before inside the house. Yes. Wear them out. Practice. Practice the platform. Yes. If you're going to wear six and a half inch platforms to your wedding, practice walking on the grass in them. We don't like the baby deer. We don't like the, the baby giraffe walk. It's okay. My, my, my dress held me up. Oh, oh was it you? Was it you? <laughs> uh, we're going to insert a video clip of that. Um, okay, so then, you know, I, it's so interesting because, again, like, I had this idea of what this conversation could be about, but I really had no idea that you're such an advocate for – this community of people that you built on your own, like Mm -hmm. you, you built, you found your community. And I think that's really the, the mission that I, aside from like accomplishing, you know, the long list of things that you want to do. It's so great that you've been able to find your people. Like you've been able to find a group of people. And especially in the space of even being an influencer, but being in fashion first, like there's probably so many different directions. Do you feel like from the conversations that happened prior to 2020 like mm-hmm. everything that's happening with the D and I movement mm-hmm. have you felt a shift in what you do like do you feel like there's more representation do you feel like that's happening yet or you as an influencer have you even like what's your experience on that I think the thing I was most surprised by in planning my wedding was how difficult it was to find vendors who had concrete work examples of working with mm. um diverse couples so not even just black people. Like, all right, not even just black people. I mean, I grew up in a place that it, there are not a lot of black people like yeah. in a specific community. Um, but but there's no excuse to just have never worked with yeah. any person of any other color than white ever. Yeah. Or to not have evidence of that work. Because yeah. what I ran into was first with the photographer. Um, I'm obviously very like visually, aesthetically aligned. Yeah. And I had a very specific vision for what I wanted. And there was one photographer in particular whose work I adored. Um, and he wasn't available, like, off the – he was, I mean, off the schedule, but also, like, definitely probably off the budget. But, yeah, yeah I would have made it work. Um, so I kind of took his work, and I was going to photographers that were more local and, and saying, this is what I'm looking for. Mm. Can you do this? And he has a body of work that's very diverse. Yeah. And what I ran into was, first of all, I would tell photographers, I don't want the orange photos. I yeah, the, the orange warm, photos. the warm, vintage, the super yeah. warm, vintagey sunbursts yeah. and random yes, crevices. Yes, I don't yes. want that. Um, is that? Do you understand what I'm saying? And then people would be like, "No," and I'd be like, "Okay, so we're immediately done." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my next question was, "Do you have any photos of black people?" Just it like, got to the point where I was just asking. That's how I was asking it. Like, do you have a? No, no, no. It yeah, got to the point where I was like, "My husband is white, my fiance is white. Yeah. I am not." Can you take a photo of the two of us standing next to each other? Wow. And is it going to look, both of us going to look the way we look that day? Yeah. Because, and and when they would say yes, I'd be like, okay, can I, can you show me? Yeah. Because maybe you just didn't put those on Instagram, which is its own separate yeah, yeah, yeah. issue. Maybe you didn't put those on Instagram. Yeah. Maybe your website is too convoluted for me to dig through every photo you've ever taken. Can you show me a photo that you have taken of someone who's not white? Yeah. That fits into this aesthetic. Yeah. And the amount of photographers I talked to. Who were like, yeah, 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 I can do it. And then ghosted me. Oh, shoot. Ghosted me. Or would like, yeah, 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 I can do it. And then they would show me a photo of like a tan white person. And I'm like, so you just don't understand what I'm asking. And to me, that's a red flag as a vendor. Yeah. We're not going to, and I'm not saying that your work isn't beautiful. Like I think there's a a temptation when you're playing. You're like, oh, well, I didn't like it anyway. No, no, it's beautiful work. Yeah. But you need to do some other work on like your inclusion. Yeah. And your diversity. And maybe you need to go do a styled shoot. And yeah. Like, well, show and, me some evidence. And, and to be honest, we saw that. And again, I was kind of one of the 
the vocal people maybe unhinged. <laughs> Some would say unhinged in 2020 where I called out an association because, again, the wedding industry had been very white focused. Very white focused. Very white focused. And, again, I grew up in a white focused community. So, yeah. for me, it was – I didn't even realize it. And then I started to look at my own website and I was mm-hmm. like – Holy shit. I'm doing it. The I'm doing it. All of my, all, yeah, oh my God, legit. Yeah. All of my white couples were at the top of my website. Yeah. And then even my Asian couples, I was realizing, oh my God, I didn't give any, because I realized that I was working to book white weddings. Yes. And that was a very kind of jarring experience. You and, were honest with yourself about but it. But I was honest with it. And I've been yeah. honest about that experience. And, you know, we, we, the 20th episode, Jamie, who was on our first retired me mentioning my white experience because <laughs> I made a lot of jokes about it. But the truth is like I feel like that's something where this D and I conversation and also being a person of color who is doing something larger than themselves, right? We want to make impact in the world. Yeah. I think it's our responsibility to also just be able to even own it if we're a part of the problem. And be honest about the problems that you're having. Like for me, um the photographer was the first thing. We found a wonderful photographer. She's incredibly yeah. talented. Her photos are beautiful and she she captured the day as it felt for me, which mm, was so love. important to me. Yeah. Um and she was very like aware of what I was asking from her and she did a great job. Then I had to find a makeup artist. That's another that category. Was That's a very so difficult yeah. for no yeah. reason. I had makeup artists that had no people of color. Um, the style I was looking for wasn't super bridal. So it mm. wasn't even like, oh, it has to be a bridal makeup artist. Yeah. No one could do my makeup the way I wanted to. I ended up finding someone on Instagram, bless him, because he did it. And he, like, I was snatched. I did my own hair for my wedding. Okay. I did my own hair for my wedding. And, like, I'm lucky. I've yeah. got great hair. I didn't have to do yeah, anything. Your I hair is beautiful. Let it live. Um, I should not have had to do my own hair for my wedding because I could not find anyone. Wow. Who could reasonably do my hair. Yeah. I had a hairstylist tell me I needed to straighten my hair for the wedding because it would be more manageable for bridal styles. I had a no. hairstylist who was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just, like, wash it the morning of the wedding. Ah! I said, girl, I'm standing right in front of you, and you're going to look me in my eyes and tell me yeah. you want me to wake up the morning of my wedding, and you're going to wash my hair and somehow, like, arrange it by 4 o'clock? Like, that's insane. Yeah. That's ridiculous. And it was just very jarring to me. That even someone who's in the position that I'm in, where yeah. I'm an influencer, people know I'm getting, yeah, married. people you're getting are reaching brand out deals, to me. You're getting, yeah. People are reaching out to me that I was in this position where I couldn't find someone to help me. Yeah. And I wasn't making these crazy big asks. I was just asking for people to be part of my wedding. Yeah. And it was so difficult for no reason. Yeah. Um, and then in the creator space, the bridal influencer and content space. Yeah. Is so absurdly white yeah um and it is because the bridal space as a whole is so white Mm -hmm. that right now thinking about it there's one other creator i can think of two other creators who are people of color Wow. and like that's that that do bridal and that is really unfortunate in my mind because it means that people are not seeing themselves reflected um i've been really grateful that my Facebook group and, and and my community as a whole is very diverse. We have brides across every spectrum. Yeah. I always say it doesn't matter to me how you identify or who you're getting married to. If you call yourself the bride, yeah. then you're here. Like this yeah. is for you. These boundaries are for you. You're yeah. part of this community. Um, and I think that that's been really, really nice because women can – or anyone can be in the group and say – yeah, you know, I'm having issues finding that stylist. I'm having an issue finding a coordinator who understands my cultural practices, yeah. or who's willing to learn. But also just be honest about it. I think yeah. that's the, that's the part where, again, like, it's okay to not, I mean, not, it's not okay, but I think if you are not interested in catering to it, then fine. Do you. Yeah. You do you. And that's maybe the shift I've had since 2020, where 2020, I was just like, pillage, I burn it all down. And now I'm a little bit like, okay, well, you know what? If that's on you, that's on you. Yeah. That's your focus. You do you. Be honest but about do it. do not be inauthentic about it. Yeah. You know? I came across one vendor who had posted on their wedding website or their, their work that they did not cater um, East Indian weddings. Just because specifically? Just specifically didn't cater East Indian weddings. And I remember sitting there just looking at that, and I was like, but at least no couples are going to reach out to you because they like your work. Yeah. And then have you hit them with that. Yeah. So I guess maybe that's better. Like, yeah. maybe it's better to just be honest. Like, well, I don't maybe do there's, this. And, there's, and, and, you know, uh, on that side of it, I I can understand some of the factors, which is it's usually a three-day. It's usually it's a, a big affair. It's a big, big affair, and not everybody can handle that kind of yeah. thing. But also just very just, interesting just very verbiage. Just, I like, think it's just, just, I just don't. Like, we just yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah. But 
I had so many conversations with vendors in planning the process um, where I was like, I just need you to be honest with me about your limitations and your boundaries. And it is not that that is going to exclude you less necessarily, yeah. but I need to know what we're working with here. I need to know what you're doing yeah. and what you can do. And if I'm asking you to do something that's out, because I did, I asked some of my vendors to do things that were outside of their yeah. realm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm asking you to do something and you can't do it, tell me no. Yeah. Tell me no. Like, I want you to, and I, my florist, bless her soul, I had this grand vision. I was going to do a greenery ceiling mm. inside the barn. I was like, oh, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be great. I'd seen this photo on Pinterest. Yeah. I was like, we have plenty of time. We can do it. Um, I sent it to her. I said, I said, I need you to, I want to do this. And she, after like a week, she reaches out to me and she goes, I have thought about this from every angle. I don't see how we can make this happen with the time, mm. the budget, and the amount of manpower that I would need to allocate to make this happen. So you are welcome to reach out to another floor specifically about the ceiling. Yeah. Um, but I need to tell you that I can't do this the way that I would want to do it for yeah. you. Yeah. Was that soul crushing? And I was like, no, actually, because I think I would have been more nervous gambling on it. Yeah. I think I would have been. You just needed she, that extra professional she said, opinion Yeah. To say. She said, I can't do this because of X, Y, Z. Here's your solutions. Yeah. And here's my alternatives. She's yeah. like, here's maybe some other ideas we could try out. And I said, you know what? Great. You're right. Yeah. Cool. Like, you're right. I don't, I'm not a florist. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, you're yeah. right. And I needed to be able to take the no, right? I needed to be able to accept the no. But also, I didn't have to worry then. It wasn't the day of my wedding. I'm, I'm watching them try to string branches on the ceiling. Yeah. And being like, oh, those don't really look the way they're supposed to. Or why isn't uh, the aisle getting set up? Where's yeah, the yeah, arch? Yeah, yeah. Like, why does it look like that? Yeah. And because she's trying to do something she's never done before and it's outside of her capacity. Yeah. Um, and, and so people just need to be honest with me. And, you know, we had we had one vendor who was not honest. We had one vendor who was like, yeah, we can do this job. Um, and they strung us along for months, mm. months. And then we finally got a quote out of them because they wouldn't tell me how much it was going to cost. Quote comes back, $16,000 wow. for a very simple lighting situation we'd asked for. Yeah. And they knew that was outside of what we, it was outside of what we wanted to spend on it. But also it's just about the amount of time. The that, amount of time that they ate up. And then I was like, I could have reached out to so yeah, many other vendors. Let me bill vendors. you for the time. So many other vendors. Yeah. You strung me along. You strung my coordinator along. You didn't want to respond to it. And then they copied me in on an email complaining about me. They That's copied me the, in <sighs> on an email complaining about me. <laughs> And then sent me a follow-up email where they were being nice. And I responded to the one where they had been complaining about me yeah. as my response. And I said, we will be passing on your services. And then I found another man who was willing to do the same job inside of my budget. And he was lovely. And he brought his puppy when he set up. So, oh, love that. We love, love that. a puppy. We love the puppy. So as somebody who is very vocal and transparent and you and you can communicate that way. Do you think you have a misconception? Do you think there's a misconception about you out there? Um yes and no. I think that people assume that I'm very difficult to get along with. Uh -huh. I think that so and, and actually I don't think that I know that because my friends have friends who tell them. Yeah. Like, oh, you're friends with Justina. Like, is she really like that all the time? Yeah. And my best friend <laughs> She put it really well. She had someone in her life who was like, uh, Justina seems kind of bitchy. Like, is she yeah. like that all the time? And she was like, yeah, she is. But it's not. First of all, the TikToks are a joke. Like, yeah. They're serious, but they're presented in a format that is funny because the best thing you can do in most of the situations is laugh. Yeah. And it's TikTok. So it's TikTok. Like, so, yes, she's like that, but not to that degree all the time. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like I am like this. These are the things that I believe. These are the things I apply in my day-to-day -day life. But I think that it's more manageable than it might seem if you're someone who has never applied these kind of boundaries before, never yeah. felt this way before. Um, and I don't advocate that everyone has to be like me. Yeah. That's not something that's part of my – I understand that maybe you take 10% of what I'm doing yeah. and apply it. And if that works for you, that's great. That's yeah. all I want. I don't need yeah. you to be. But also that you said it early on. It's like, you don't have to like you. you like, yeah. You and, don't have to like me. And that's, that's okay. a really great, confident, like 
I mean, that's like the therapy work that I need to continue yes. to do because I, yeah. I think I'm a people pleaser oh, yeah. at the soul. So it's well, very, very, weddings. yeah. And I work in weddings. So of course the last thing I want to say is no, but after yeah. doing it for 15 years and being in the early stages, saying yes to that greenery feeling and mm-hmm. then coming down to the wire and then having that moment, I've now been able to adjust it, mm-hmm. but it's very interesting. So then your misconception, would you say is that you are just, you're just, you have boundaries. Yeah. And I think that the the issue is that we are as a society uncomfortable with seeing women really Mm. intensely protect their peace and not, I I hate to say I don't care because that's not true. I care very much. Yeah. I care a lot about so many things. Um, but I am comfortable with people not agreeing with me. I'm comfortable with people not liking me. I'm comfortable with people not liking my content. I'm comfortable with people thinking that something that I've done is not what they would do. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Yeah. That is totally fine. And I actually prefer, like, you don't have to be Justina Sharp. I'm Justina Sharp. Yeah. And I'm cool with what I've done. Yeah. I'm comfortable with the decisions I've made. Um, you just have to be you. And so for the people that follow me and enjoy my content, I say, if you take 10% of this and apply it and it makes your life better, that's my job done. Yeah. That's all I want for you. Like, I want you to be happy. Yeah. If you watch my video and you go, I hate her. Her voice is so annoying and the things she's saying are dumb, then scroll on. Yeah, scroll on. Or get in my comment section at your own risk because I do read all of my comments and I will respond. And I think that's a shocking an uncomfortable yeah, situation. She's sharp, y'all. She's sharp. Very sharp. <laughs> Very sharp objects ahead if you get in my comment section. <laughs> so um, what's that's it? Yeah, what is ahead? Like what's what are you most excited about this year? I mean you you hit like a big milestone. You got married. Yes. What's next? Yeah, like, I got married. Um I I hit a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. Yes. Which is crazy. Yeah, it's it's always crazy. Like I wake up every day and I like broadcast to all these yeah. people. I feel so lucky. That blue check mark. Blue check mark. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, it's you know, it's sexy. Um I just just recently, this is top secret scoop, signed Ooh. with an agency. Yes. So I'm going to be sort of moving forward into a new phase in my career, which is moving into commercial acting and print modeling. Love. Which I'm very excited about, something I've wanted to do for years and um, really had to kind of back burner both to build my own community and then when we were planning the wedding weddings consume everything that is what you're doing people yeah that's like, the work you're doing when i was yeah. getting, when i was engaged people would be like oh like what's new the wedding the wedding the wedding is what's new i don't remember before the wedding i can't see what it's going to look like after the wedding um and so i'm you know i feel very lucky to be able to sort of pursue that new yeah. phase get into I that new that. space and you know brides with boundaries is not going away I think some people, I actually, I know some people were hoping. Yeah, I think Brides of Bound needs a podcast. People were hoping. Yeah. People, you know, were praying on my downfall. They were like, oh, she's going to get married and she's finally going to go away. No. Your voice sorry, just got louder. Sorry to those people. Yeah, you got sharper. I've got more time now. Yes. I've got more time now. I love so. it. I love that. So, and then we'll make sure to put all of the credits to everything below. Yes, your, everything. The Facebook group, all the different things that you have. And last question, what is one thing that you are eating right now that you are obsessed with? Like favorite meal? Is your favorite spot? Oh, yes. Okay. So my favorite spot for eavesdropping is La Boheme here in West yes. Hollywood. Yes, uh-huh. Because I am very nosy. If you see me out in public and I'm not talking, that means I'm probably eavesdropping on you. I'll just tell you that right now. And my favorite thing to make myself at home is Jennifer Aniston's, um, it's like a quinoa salad if yeah. you search it on TikTok, but I make it with couscous Ooh. and I don't put walnuts in it because I don't like random crunchy nuts in my salad. Okay. We're going to put that in the, well, we're going to yes. put that in the description we'll, we'll, box. We'll find a link. It's so good. Yeah. I have been eating it nonstop because it's so hot in LA. Yeah. It's so hot. That the idea of cooking makes me want to fling myself out a window. Yes. So yes. That's what I'm doing right now. The couscous salad and eavesdropping at La Boheme. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. And I love this conversation. Thank you for being real and so sharp. Ah, I do what I can. (laughs) Gotta live up to the name. (laughs) Bye, everybody. Bye. Ooh, wait. Don't go yet. Make sure you subscribe and like and follow and transfer me via Venmo. Thanks for listening.